entering text into a document, you have the ability to edit it as well. This lesson will cover basic editing skills that all beginners using Word need to know. The first step in editing in Word is learning how to select text or objects for editing. Understanding how to select text in Word 2013 is mandatory even for the absolute beginner. There are a few ways we can select text. We can select a single word at a time by double-clicking it. Select a single sentence by holding down the control button on the keyboard while clicking it. We can even select an entire paragraph by triple-clicking inside the paragraph. The most common way to select specific characters is by using the click and drag method, which is moving the mouse pointer to the left of the text, clicking and holding down the mouse button, dragging the mouse pointer over the text, and then releasing. A mini toolbar will appear after we select text. This contains common formatting commands. We will cover formatting later in the course. We can also right-click to see additional editing tools, but we will cover those later. Now let's say we want to change the formatting of an entire document. While we are still on the Home tab, we'll click the Select command from the Editing group and then choose Select All. The text and any objects in the document have all been selected. Once we finish editing, we just click an area off the text to deselect it. You can move information from one area to another in your document using the cut and copy commands. Both commands make a copy of the information you've selected and place it on the Microsoft Office clipboard. Let's copy some text to the clipboard. First, we'll select the text and click the copy button in the clipboard group under the Home tab. Now, Let's open the clipboard to see where our text is stored when we copy. Click the arrow at the bottom right of the clipboard group to open the clipboard pane. The text has been moved to the clipboard. However, the original text has not been removed. Now we'll cut some text from a document and move it to the clipboard. Select the text, click the cut button on the clipboard group. The text has been removed from the document but has been moved to the clipboard. Once information has been moved to the clipboard, it can be pasted to another area in the document or into a different document. We'll use Paste Options by clicking the Paste button drop-down arrow. The Paste options are Keep Source Formatting, Merge Formatting, and Keep Text Only. A preview is shown when we move over each Paste option. Keep Source Formatting paste with the original formatting, Merge formatting changes text to the formatting of the new document, and Keep Text only applies if you've copied text and pictures and only want to copy the text. Paste a picture is an option that will appear when pasting a picture. Let's take a closer look at the clipboard where cut and copied information is stored. The clipboard holds the text and objects we've copied and cut from our document. It can only hold 24 objects, when a 25th object is added, the first copied item is removed. We can select an item individually and either paste it from the clipboard or remove it from the clipboard using the delete button. We can also click the clear all button at the top of the clipboard menu to delete the entire list. We can click the X in the upper right hand corner when we want to close the clipboard pane. You can insert text anywhere in the document simply by placing your insertion point at the desired location and start typing. Word automatically moves text to the right of the cursor as you type. For example, let's type the phrase, text goes here, at the end of the first paragraph. If we want to replace the text as we type, we'll use one of the two options available in Word. Let's use the first option to replace the phrase, text goes here. We simply select the text and start typing. This deletes the highlighted text and replaces it with our new text. The second option, the overtype mode, is a bit more permanent and can be set if we prefer to regularly type over our current text. To set up the overtype mode, click on the File tab, select Word Options, and then Advanced. 
We'll click the Use the Insert key to control overtype mode and Use overtype mode box. Then click OK. Now in our document, we can place our insertion point in front of the text we want to type over. As we type the phrase, this removes existing text, it is replaced by, this also removes existing text. If we only select the Use the Insert key to control overtype mode, we can toggle the overtype mode on or off by pressing the Insert key while we type. We can turn these settings off by clicking the File tab, selecting Word Options, clicking Advanced, and deselecting the checkboxes. Then click OK. If you want to swap out one word for another, you can use the Replace command. This feature allows you to find words and replace them. We'll explore this by finding the word United States and replacing each instance with the initials US. First, we need to open the Find and Replace dialog box. To do this, click the Replace button under the Home tab in the Editing group. Next, we'll type United States in the Find What field and type US in the Replace With field. We can set additional search options by clicking the More button if necessary. To review each instance of the word, we can click Find Next, click Replace, and then click Find Next again to move to the next word. If we don't need to verify each word, we can use Replace All for faster results. Once we've made the changes, we can close the dialog box by clicking Close. Autocorrect automatically corrects some errors you make. For example, by default, Microsoft Word will start the first letter of every new paragraph with a capital letter and will correct commonly misspelled words. Let's go ahead and customize our autocorrect. From the File tab, Click Options, and then Proofing. Next, click the Autocorrect Options button. A list of predefined autocorrect options is shown. The first column of the list shows what we would type, and the second column shows how it would appear in our document. We can also add to the list. We'll set it to replace USA with United States and click the Add button. The Autocorrect dialog box has other tabs that allow you to set up Auto Format, Actions, Math Autocorrect, and Auto Format as you type. Once we are finished with the Autocorrect dialog box, we'll click OK and then click OK again to close the Word options and return to our main page. You will find the Undo and Redo buttons very handy. They allow you to quickly undo and redo your actions. For example, if you accidentally delete a paragraph, you can simply click the Undo button to move back a step and restore the paragraph. The Undo icon is on the Quick Access toolbar. Let's look at the benefits of this feature. Let's make a change to our font and then undo it. We'll change our title to Verdana and change the color to blue. To change it back to the original format, we can click the Undo drop-down list Find the point where we want to restore it to and select it. The Redo button is to the right of the Undo button. We can use Redo to restore our actions one at a time. For instance, we can redo the change to the font style. We can redo all the way back to our original change. 
If Word cannot redo the last action, the button changes back to the Repeat button. We'll cover this button later in the course. Microsoft Word 2013 can hyphenate words at the end of lines for you, or you can choose to do it yourself. By default, hyphenation is turned off, which means words won't automatically hyphenate at the end of each line. Instead, the word will move down to the next line. We can turn on the hyphenation feature in Microsoft Word 2013. First, we click the Page Layout tab, then, in the Page Setup group, click the Hyphenation button. Let's select Automatic to have Word choose the hyphenation of our document. The words at the end of a line are now hyphenated. We'll change it back to None in order to look at the manual option. Now we'll return to the Hyphenation button and select Manual from the list. This will let us select which words we'd like to hyphenate. When we're done, we'll click Cancel. If we decide to remove the hyphenation after setting them up manually, we'll go to the list and select None. Then, in the document, we'll remove the hyphens we've approved. We can also set options to tell Word the maximum amount of space to allow between the words and the right margin. This is called the hyphenation zone. To set the amount of space, we'll go back to the hyphenation button list and choose hyphenation options. Here we can choose to turn on the Automatically Hyphenate Document feature, choose whether we want to hyphenate words in all caps, set the hyphenation zone, and choose to limit the number of consecutive hyphens we allow. Once we're finished setting these options, we can choose OK.